level of the acrobatics and a lot of variety in the routine. Absolutely amazing. Great dancers, these two people. I, I really enjoyed it. Great dancing on the part of Shane and Shannon Jensen taking home the championship, of course. And uh, I, I'm all choked up about it. <laughs> Yes. Uh, one couple, uh, our fourth place couple was a gymnastics couple where mm -hmm. they were doing a lot of aerials and a lot of things that come from the world. But we're going to try this with the microphone actually on. Okay, so now that we have the microphone on, we can... Okay, so for those of you who are just joining us or for those of you who couldn't hear us at the beginning, we had a microphone turned off and uh, we have taken care of that now. So what we're Can everybody hear us now? Yes, so uh, yep. for those of you oh, in okay, Paris, perfect. check in with us again. Those of you in Paris, los boricuas en Charlotte, pues dinos si nos estás escuchando. Hello, Florida. Hello, Miami. Can you hear us? Yes. We're here live from Emerald Ball for everybody who, did, who just joined us. And we are just in the middle of making a recap about what happened last night. Um, we were just talking about the cabaret divisions and how fantastic the winners have been, Shane and Shannon Jensen, with a spectacular new routine, as I understand, correct? And well, a little bit of new choreography. A yes. um, little bit of new choreography where at the end, as we were saying before, at the end, they have been famous for doing a split lift, yes. an inverted split mm -hmm. lift that we have seen them do many times before. They clinched the world championship with it. Mm -hmm. And now they're doing it in a chair lift with a split at the end. Shane is showing his remarkable flexibility And there. it looks so easy when they do it. Like when I watch them, I'm like, oh yeah, it's like no problem. And then try it. I mean, I know better, so. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. They really make it look effortless. And uh, we, we also noticed a great variety of different sources of the choreography. Yes. Uh, we had our fourth place couple doing a lot of acrobatics. A lot of acrobatic lift, spectacular, but sometimes breathtaking. Very breathtaking, very yes. breathtaking. Very obvious that uh, the young lady is a tumbler and she's bringing her gymnastics pass to play and bringing it to play in a really good style on the dance floor. And, uh, you know, we saw a, a little bit more of a, a, um, a lyrical uh, routine in the second place couple gorgeous couple. I understand they've just came back from an international competition in Moscow that they actually won there. Right, right. And so we um, have beautiful, lyrical, gorgeous routine. Really love that too. Love that one too. And another nice, uh, just adding a really uh, a good touch to it was that our next couple did some rhythm and blues. Yes. That was very entertaining, so a very nice addition to the field. And, uh, you know, overall. All right, I just learned that we are having good sound right now, so I hope you're enjoying our live broadcast. Well, of course we have good sound because we I do am apologize your man on the for microphone. the little hiccup at the beginning. When people well, that's okay. Hear. This is a live television. That's the kind of stuff that happens. But we are going to have Wayne Eng here uh, in just a few moments. Yes. So that's just a short wrap on the Open Professional Cabaret Division. What yes. a magnificent event. We're looking forward to even more of that next year. Absolutely, we will. So, now, um, another thing that, mm -hmm. uh, with another, another bit of the action that we wanted to talk about, just uh -huh. to let you know, one of the things that makes the Emerald Ball very special is I noticed the 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 number of judges adjudicator level dancers that are on the floor competing with their students here at the emerald ball just to give you an example some people that have been introduced as judges on the circuit sveta daly is here competing uh, with students yes. andre kafrelin is here with students uh andre paramonov mm -hmm. a competition organizer and a show dance champion here with students yes german mustik world show dance champion we have a Dance champion. Right, right. Yes. So, yes, and he is on the floor. Uh, also, uh, Giacomo Agrelo, mm -hmm. Erminio Stefano, uh, United States top International notch, Standard, Top, top Notch. notch. So and Italian uh, Sergio saw him today as well. So, uh, adjudicators are still improving their skills and still competing with so those no skills. So no wonder that the level of students here in the U.S. is just spectacular. And Emerald Ball is really where everybody brings out the best. It's well known that if you want to be serious about your dancing, Emerald Ball is an absolute must competition and must be. To be sure, to be sure. Absolutely. Now we're going to bring in the organizer of the Emerald Ball to speak to you live here. Mr. Wayne Eng coming to join us to talk to us about his remarkable Welcome. success. Welcome. How are you doing? Wayne, we're so delighted to have you. 50 years of success. How do you do it? I take it one year at a time. 
just like today, I take one day at a time. Okay, so today has been a fabulous day. You have had events that were literally full. First off, how do you get to that level? And second off, what do you say to the couples who aren't allowed to enter because they just there's not enough room? Well, um, first off, uh, we know it's one of the toughest competition here. You know, and when you when you dance here, you have to look at you not know, always you get first places at the comp, you may not even make the final here. So it's really have to look at you challenge yourself. It's a progression. And we have a lot of students that are very happy just making the finals here. And that's a big achievement for a lot of them. And for the ones that somehow can't get the entries in, we recommend that you get it on time. It's very difficult to get your entries in the week before the comp because we have quarterfinals and some first rounds and our schedule is set for the whole week. So what in essence is like, yes, you can, um, you can enter last minute, but there's no guarantee anymore that you will be the heat you actually want to be in. So for next year, try to put the entries on on time. That's absolutely true. Now we do understand you actually, you, you do like all competitions, you registrar on duty to make last minute changes. But uh, our registrar here, Joy Hillary, has also been taking some entries and even taking phone numbers. Is that right? That's correct. Actually, we have two, Joy and Cassandra. And they work like 16, 17 hours a day. Whoa. And that's a lot. And that's a lot of stress, too. And not only that, but uh, you have also been pulling double duty yourself, as we understand. How did, uh, last night we talked about the videoing that was going on upstairs. So Dance Vision, hard at work, making videos and making new syllabus for dancers in the future. How's that going? It's going terrific. Um, today was the last day, and um, I saw some pictures of it. They sent snapshots to me. Um, we had Nadia Eftedal, Kasha Kosat, um, and Anna Trimbaskaya. So it's going to be fantastic. So also what I found is an innovation. You had your program actually available online. Like you could purchase a subscription to the program. How did that work? Um, you know, it's our first time. Um, it's challenging, it's challenged to some people, but for the most part, um, I would say 90% of the people love it. So um, you didn't have to buy a big paper program anymore. Uh, you were able to just have it on your cell phone. So I thought that was amazing. Lots of innovations at Emerald Ball. Thank you. Wayne, give us one final thought to send us into the Saturday night session. Well, it's, we have a lot of top awards to present, top Emerald Ball awards, but tomorrow is a big day. It's one of our biggest kids' day, and we have a fantastic party tonight. So i um, love to have you next year, 2019. Be here. Wayne Eng, ladies and gentlemen, and tomorrow, champions of the future on the dance floor in the early morning. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. So that gives us a little bit of what we have going on. Tomorrow we have some champions of the future. The kids are going to be there. Wayne, we know you have plenty of work. We're going to send you back to the ballroom. Thank you so much. So Sunday, looking forward a little bit, children, the teddy bear heat's coming up. Oh, my God. It's like, have you ever seen those kids? It, they are absolutely amazing. It's so cute, the little ones, the teddy bear divisions. I love them. It's, it, it's such a fun event for us to be in. And the teddy bear division is very strong. The teddy bear division, we can explain to you a little bit about what goes on there. Children as young as three and four, all the way up to the age of 18 before they go into the adult heats, compete on Sunday morning. Uh, that's so they, they don't have to get out of school. They compete on Sunday morning. And the littlest ones are competing. When they participate, they get a teddy bear. This is so adorable. And you know, the emotions that the, that the kids have, they're really honest. They're dead honest on the floor. They're not holding back. So if you haven't seen it before, go see the kids' day on Sunday. It's an amazing day. Fabulous, fabulous. It's a great thing. And what's really neat is to see how those kids are shaping dance sport for the future. Uh, a quick shout out to Olga Ginsberg, who is going to bring a lot of her kids from San Diego. That's yes, a great a program. Yes, a big kids school. So it's big school for children. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to bring in Maurice. Hello, Maurice. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Here we are. 
So, Maurice, you have the Imperial Grand Ball coming up. Tell us about it. It's called the uh, International International Grand International Grand Ball. Grand Ball. Sorry, yes. in San Francisco. Yes, um, we are very honored to uh, be the new owners of this competition, and we are coming in a very exciting time. It's the 50th year anniversary of the competition, so we are honoring not only the 50th year of all the previous owners putting all the effort to make it to what happened, what it is today. We are celebrating dancers. We are celebrating professionals, we're celebrating pro-ams, amateurs, every single an, uh, dancer that had made all the history up until now. So we're very excited to have that at the end of July, July 29th, 27th to the 30th uh, of this year. Now, I have been at this event the last couple of years, and uh, the previous organizer decided that they dedicate the competition to a certain country because it's called the International Grand Ball. Um, do, can we expect anything similar like that? Are you going to have an international theme? What, what can we expect at International Grand Ball this year? Okay, thank you so much. Um, I, as I said before, we are celebrating dancing. We are felt celebrating 50 year anniversary of dancing in America. So we are celebrating, that's, that's a, the theme of this year. We are celebrating the dancers, we're celebrating the people that have put together all the effort for the last 50 years to make something like this happen. And we are obviously international, so we have representatives from all over the world and we're gonna honor them as part of the celebration for this year. It's gonna turn out an amazing event. Event. I wish you all the best of luck for it. Um, how is it to be a first-time competition organizer? I assume it's very exciting. It is very exciting, and, and it's, it's a challenge for us. But um, in, on behalf of my wife, obviously, she has the uh, another competition. She, she's been a seasoned uh, judge and, and adjudicator, so she's got a little bit more experience than I do. But we are excited. It's a challenge, and it's something that we welcome and we are honored to have. So Maurice Salgado to take the reins of right out of the box there and not only that but commuting coast to coast to do it congratulations Absolutely. thank you so much thanks for having us here thank, thank you, you so much all right now we want to talk to you a little bit about what it's like to prepare for a dance competition and there's no one better qualified to talk to us about preparation makeup and bringing out the best versions of yourself than those two crazy guys alan, alan and, and nathan Nate. grundy welcome Talk about fashion sense. Talk about Hello. fashion sense. Here they are. You guys, uh, honestly, the best looking Thank pair so I have much. seen. Thank you very, very, very much. Handsome, Good sir. evening. Very handsome. Good evening, everybody. You both look amazing. Happy Hello. Cinco de Mayo. Woohoo. Okay. okay. That's, uh, that's right. We got Cinco de Mayo here with these two guys. Yeah. Okay. You ready to party? Tell we us. Are. First off, everybody wants to know who was the earliest that got up this morning to get ready. Oh my gosh. Well, we can't say who it was, but we were up at 3.30 this morning. Our first client was at 4 a.m. Uh, we just finished. It's now, I guess, oh about 8. Gosh. No nap time uh, today. No nap time today. Let's see. Yeah. So, uh, well, 15, so, so you went straight from 4 o'clock this morning until 8 o'clock. We, had, we, a, we had a bit of a break. We had some lunch, but we have our little dog, Charlie, Shirley Ballas' dog, and uh, he, took he, a nap. A nap. he took a nap today for four hours because he was so tired. He looked at me this morning and was like, what are you doing? Why are you getting up? Uh, okay, so right. Shirley, wherever you are, Charlie is safely resting. He's, he's fine. Charlie's good. He's had his Charlie's treats. Good. He's doing okay. <laughs> yeah. he is. So okay. let's talk a little bit about the dancing and getting ready for a competition. So, uh, you know, you basically, all you do is you're getting people ready for a competition. What is your best advice? If you would um, tell somebody we're going to a competition, what are, what are you supposed to do? So the best advice I would give is to prepare, and uh, it, it, a lot of has to do with what you what your dress is like, uh, the image that you're going for uh, with your partner, and uh, not just individually, uh, the style that you're going. Do you actually help people create an image as well, or do you just kind of like let them let you know? Let do they let you know what they would like, or do you actually advise them and create them and help them? We advise them and create them and help them. Uh, sometimes they know exactly what they want, sometimes they don't know. Uh, so that's part of our job, is to advise them uh, what they need or, or just to guide them in that direction. Uh, of what they Especially with how early in it is in the morning with a lot, of, a lot of competitors. It's so early, the brains are starting to turn on. They're really, really stressed. They're nervous and calming them down 
getting to know them, asking them questions, especially if they're new to you, and realizing what, what, are, you tr what are you doing here? You want to feel good. You want to feel great about what you're doing. You're here to dance. Dance yeah. is a beautiful, free form of what we do, what we all do. Yeah. And yeah, life. And so I think Emerald Ball as well, that. because it's one of the biggest competitions in the United States, uh, a lot of people care about how they look. So that's really special. That's really special. Okay, so take us through the process. Somebody walks in and uh, they are ready for their first look. Maybe it's their first competition and they're nervous, ready to get their hair done. You're looking at a blank canvas. What do you do? The first question that we ask them is what don't you like? Cuz a lot of people do you love? A lot of people they go into an environment where they're just given something uh, and we uh, like to ask the question what don't you like about something you've had before? or something you've looked at that you uh, you maybe think, that's not going to suit yeah. me. Perfect. So uh, so that's the first question that we ask. Question. If, for example, somebody comes to you and they're bringing like a picture of a movie star or a picture of a famous model or a snippet out of a newspaper and say, I want to look like that, does that help or does it distract? It um, helps a lot. It helps, but for me, just being uh, maybe humorous, I always say my hands are not ones. I'm not a magician, they're just hands. Uh, so when somebody brings me a picture of somebody that, you know... So we have to talk about expectation. My gosh, oh, my gosh. So, so sometimes so it's really funny. Enhancing people's beauty, enhancing, especially women. We have most, yeah. pretty much most of our clients are women. So enhancing a woman's beauty. That's all we're here, that's what we're here for. Making them feel beautiful. Yeah. All now, right. Obvious question then, what about the gentleman competitors? Well. Well, the general one. competitors, <laughs> I, uh, I, I not only put hair up, but I actually cut hair. I can color hair. I'm a fully qualified hairdresser. Uh, a lot of people in the business uh, just put hair up, and I do the whole thing. So uh, now it's become a fashion that the men are coming, and then now they're wanting, they're paying more attention to their hair. They, you know, they want the attention that the ladies are getting. So that's great. That's great. That the men Especially are amongst that. the younger, the younger boys yeah, these course. days. The boys are coming in. They're wanting a new look. They're wanting something new and fashionable because the business is so large. They want to feel. They want to. They want to have feel a special. character and a personality of themselves. So you're really able to, you know, make everybody happy who would like to dance ballroom. Absolutely. I love this. Absolutely. And ten, a hundred and twenty percent, whatever you want to go to. All <laughs> right. Thank you so, so much you for joining it. us there tonight. So there you have it, folks. Finally, two men who have proven their ability to make everybody happy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so Alan much Nathan, for joining thank us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. And happy Cinco de Mayo. Thank you, Dominic. Happy Cinco de Mayo, guys. Have a great one. Okay, so things going very well. You can hear the action behind us here at the 2018 Emerald Ball. We have all sorts of events coming up. And welcome, Justina Stuknauskas. Yes, hello. Hello. Okay, Mr. Dusnauskas, a lot of talk going on about how many events you have worldwide. Tell us about it. Good question. Is it really those questions happening? That's good. <laughs> it means that we're doing good. Yeah, actually, we started with one, which was in Lithuania, my uh, like home country. Then it developed into Dubai, uh, right? And then we followed up to the Asia, which is in Bali. And then we wrapped everything in in Barcelona, which is coming up. So, and I've just heard yesterday that you're part of the dance vision circuit. Yes, that was our main, like, the biggest, I would say, joy and uh, exciting news uh, because we were actually the first one internationally who were belonging to the American family. So we're truly honored and looking forward for success. So tell us a little bit then. It's obviously going to be a very different experience. People are seeing firsthand what it's like to compete in the United States. What's it like when they go to Europe? What can they expect? Well, to be honest, of course, uh, in, in the biggest market is in America, and you can you can see really like uh, a lot of competitors here already. The good thing is that in Europe, uh, even outside in Asia, the prime is starting to build up, and the process still is a process that's not very fast. But on the other hand, uh, we're really trying to implement everything what America has the best. I mean, the system itself and uh, the. I, this, the, the system for counting uh, scrutineers and everything. We really, truly believe that this model is the best in America. 
so we're implementing that there. The only thing what we're trying to focus as well, knowing that, for example, our competitions as Bali, Barcelona, Dubai, Lithuania, uh, I mean, there is something people want to experience. So they take it like a trip to experience something. So we're trying to let them let them ex experience something like uh, they would they would experience when they go for holiday for example. So it's not only dancing, it's really a destination. Correct, right. So we're trying to have a tours uh, so they would actually feel that they had some holiday as well as dancing as well as experience something new. So what you've done then is you have really taken dance sport from being just a weekend pastime to putting it on people's bucket list. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I totally believe so. <laughs> right. So uh, the competitions internationally, what has been your observation about how the international dancers, both the professionals and even the, the students, how are they reacting to the American style being infused into their culture? As I said, it's a process. And of course, for, European, for Europeans and for Asians, more familiar was uh, international Latin, international ballroom. But it's starting to be bigger. They see and they see the good quality we're trying to present them of how American smooth can look and what is American rhythm and is actually I think that we're on very good go to in about a few years actually to build it about the same you know that the, the amount of couples of entries would actually reach the same and not only that that gives them more dances to do how do they feel about that it's fine people love dancing I mean uh, we are searching for people who love traveling dancing and they're ready for the new new you know challenges so maybe smooth and rhythm is one of it excellent excellent well good luck with the competitions we're really excited thank to see you, so you additioning you to see your addition us. to the dance thank support you. circuit or to the dance vision circuit excuse me thank you so much mr duke nauskas and you. the competitions all over the world ladies and gentlemen part of the dance vision circuit And welcome live at our Emerald Ball live broadcast. Welcome, welcome. How is it feeling to be part of the action? It feels amazing. You know, um, I moved to America five years ago, and there hasn't been a year when I didn't come to Emerald Ball, and I think there is a reason for that. Okay, tell us a little bit about the uh, uh, about that journey. You moved to America five years ago and found your way to Emerald Ball, and it's become a home for you. Tell us about it. Well, you know, when the atmosphere is so mesmerizing and so warming and so nice, you want to come back and you feel like it's your home, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, I'm just really, really, really happy that the, this event has so, ma so much success. Uh, I mean, the best of the couples are coming to this competition from the United States, from Europe, from everywhere. So it's just amazing. It's just amazing, and I'm really happy for everybody who organizes this competition and for everybody who competes here. So, as you go through the evening, while you're watching the competition, while you're watching all of the people go, what are the things that you're noticing? What are you looking for? Well, I have a lot of kids competing here, a lot of, of my students, and uh, what I'm looking for is positive energy, I think, because... You know, it's not as interesting to watch when people try so hard anymore, but I think that that's what it's amazing about this competition, that people actually bring joy and, uh, as I said, positive energy to the event. So that. So are you, are you involved tomorrow, Major, in the kids' day? Do you have lots and lots of couples? I do pro-am. I do... Um, I do pro-am. I do a lot of coaching, and I uh, I have a lot of junior couples who are competing tomorrow. Yeah. That's amazing. Tomorrow's an amazing day. We've talked about it previously. Sunday is Kids Day at Emerald Ball, and the ballroom is literally going to be transformed. True that. True that. What are you going to do with all the teddy bears? I don't actually have teddy bears. I have junior one and junior two couples and some junior students who I dance pro-am with. But it's always so packed at the Emerald Ball with all the kids, all the parents, all the coaches. It's, I mean, outstanding, you know. Well, good luck with the Junior One and Junior Two couples. We've been watching some of them on the dance floor over the years, and they are literally growing up on the dance floor, but the technique that they're bringing is absolutely outstanding. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.
So Junior 1 and Junior 2 competitors going to be on the dance floor tomorrow. That's yes. We're looking very forward to that. Uh, we want to also talk a little bit about how things are going. This has been a jam-packed competition. Yes. Uh, going through my notes here, today the B Division Latin Scholarship mm -hmm. full, sold out, sold out at 14 entries. The professional American rhythm that is going to be danced tonight, sold out. 24 entries. Wow. They, they are, they, it, it says on the roster, waiting list only. Tonight, the amateur Latin competition here on the West Coast. Packed. Packed, sold out. Again, full at 14. Oh at 14. my God. So the only thing that can be entered, the only thing where there's an opening left is the professional ballroom. And that is already has 18 couples. So ladies and gentlemen, remember for next year, the best advice I can give you for getting all your entries in and getting all your heats that you want is enter early because it's really getting full here. It's very hard to get these entries in last minute and to avoid disappointment and wait lists, you know. Now we, we are delighted to bring you a lady who did not wait until the last minute exactly. she is here ready to go and she has made up one of our competition winners come on welcome in, come on in. you look cute to boot tell us about it thank you i'm anita aloha and thank nice you nice to meet you and not I, camera I, shy at all folks no no <laughs> and i i brought my first place trophy from five years ago that I'm, i brought it because i'm proud of it i brought i got it here you, you danced five years ago? That's 2013? 2000, wow. Was, and what did you win? It, it was a... Um, gold, that, what does it say? Gold, gold, solo Dance Award. Gold, gold Theatrical Nightclub Two-Step Solo Exhibition. That must have been such a fabulous dance and such a fabulous day. And, you know, making memories here at Emerald Ball, this is really what it is all about. My first dance sport was in 2004 at the Emerald Ball. So also for you, Emerald Ball was your first competition. Yes. See, many people choose Emerald Ball as their first dance sport competition. That's fantastic. Yes, I love it. I love it. How did you start dancing? I actually started as a Hawaiian dancer, uh -huh. and I was on the Puffa Puffa Rice breakfast cereal commercial doing solo Hawaiian. So I did Hawaiian for many years with Don Ho Show in Vegas and all that, but I was in Hawaiian for so long. But the ballroom is I love so much is keeping me young because I'm 72. And now no, no, no way. That, that's right there, everybody. That is our greatest testimony of what ballroom dancing can do for you. Look at this. Look at this. Because it makes me 32. There you go. That is uh, true. It keeps so you young. Ballroom 72 dancing. is the new 32, everybody. And it's better than Hawaiian because you get to actually touch somebody and look in their eyes. And <laughs> you know, <laughs> Hawaiian, you're looking at the audience. You know, that's I, true. That's very alarm. true. Hawaiian, you're looking at the audience, which is very nice, but you're not touching anyone, you know, and so w w it's good, but I mean, this is... So did you dance this year in 2018? I, I, I've, I've gone from, you know, do, taking group classes to privates to competition to social to um, uh, just enjoying and trying to keep... Um, it keeps me young. <laughs> And I love so it. amazing. Now, your trophy in 2013 was for Nightclub Two-Step, which is a dance that most people associate with purely social dancing. How did you make that routine competitive? Uh, it was, it was uh, lifts and drops. It was um, the gold theatrical Nightclub Two-Step. So really, lifts and drops. I wish my partner were here, but he's then eating dinner. So <laughs> Oh, he did, I, I guess he worked up an appetite. <laughs> I'll try to control myself. I can give you a kiss. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing your joyful experience here at Emerald Ball with all of us live. And good luck, and we hope to see you many, many more years here at Emerald Ball. Thank Congratulations, you. Congratulations, and we're looking forward to even more from you in 2019. So Nightclub Two-Step... A uh -huh, dance that was Ball. right at Emerald Ball. That is a dance that was written in San Diego, California, and has joined Emerald Ball and is competitive, theatrical even. Okay, and here we have our smooth dancers. You bet, smooth dancers. Diego Novikov and his partner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Diego, you have gone from Latin to American smooth, training, coaching, making videos. Tell us how do you keep all of that information? How, how do you work so much and so hard? You know what, I think uh, one thing is helping the other uh, in a way. So whatever I have, whatever knowledge I have, whatever I collected, uh, and I'm still collecting in Latin, I'm uh, of course uh, using it. 
uh, but there is new things coming from the ballroom side of it, uh, from uh, ballet side of it, so that's how it works together. Okay, so now last night, American Smooth, particularly, particularly in the Foxtrot, the Foxtrot was around where not only was it fun to watch, it looked like it was fun to do. Tell us what your inspiration is for choreography. Uh, well, I think a lot of uh, like uh, American movies and this kind of stuff. And then uh, I use some jive as well. So, you know, it's a little bit of everything. And the other thing that I noticed also was your costumes. You, you picked out some very, very some magnificent colors uh, and ways to kind of highlight yourself and your partner. How did you come to those decisions? Well, this well, is a question for Sasha, probably. Um, this is what we um, found out with Chris. He's amazing, um, our sponsor, and um, it's, uh, it's his look on us. So, and we're like deciding uh, everything together and come up with a uh, look like that. Okay, so tell us what it is like then. Uh, we know that you're champion level competitors. We see you all the time. How many hours a week are you putting into your own personal dancing versus the hours that you're putting into, say, student dancing? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's a good question because the thing is you have obviously to balance everything. And uh, uh, I try to spend, I uh, put the priority uh, right now on our practice and we try to practice about four hours. Four hours a day? Yes. Well, you, you have to keep in mind that you also have a travels when you go either for work, so you miss those days, or when you have to travel for the competitions. So you have to kind of balance it out and keep all of those uh, things in mind. But basically, it takes that level of commitment. How early do you get up in the morning? Uh, about 8.30, probably. 9 o'clock. Uh, so, so to bed, close to the morning, probably. Time. Ah, I see. So it's not so much the early mornings as it is the late nights. Ah, uh, yes. I would say that. Gotcha. Well, we can see that it is absolutely working for you. Congratulations on a fabulous result last night. We know that you're pushing it ever higher. Yegor. And thank you so much for joining us here live at Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank you so much. Congratulations. Great finish last night. Great finish. So, Yegor Novikov, what a great dancer. It was beautiful. And I love her pure style. Yes, you know, pure. Uh, and we have another guest here. Hello, beautiful lady. How are you tonight? Good. I'm so happy to be here today. I came to watch my friends to support. Yes. Yeah, it's very beautiful event. So tell us a little bit about how last night went for you. Um, I saw you made the final, but there was a little hiccup happening. Um, how, 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 what happened? Let us know. Uh, we uh, basically checked results first uh, and of course by the list we realized that we didn't make uh, to the uh, top six first and uh, we didn't change um, our costumes but we decided to stay watch you know finalists and uh, we've been staying just here in the deck area um, and then uh, when we've been watching station dance um, like everybody in the ballroom they you know find out they saw that uh, Max and injured his leg, unfortunately. And uh, then they make a decision to, um, you know, step out of the floor and uh, they make a decision to um, take another couple who been uh, on the seventh place. When they find out it's me and my partner, they ask us to choose the flavors. Yeah. And uh, my partner just changed the jacket. So, but so it was lucky that you were still in the ballroom. Yes, yes, of course, but we usually always watch the next round if we um, uh, didn't make it, let's say, we watch, we like to see how the style develop. And well, I think you guys were very worthy finalists. I thoroughly enjoyed your dancing and um, I'm, I, I, I felt it was a, a great inclusion into the final. It was a very, very good inclusion. Being able to introduce oh. you, congratulations on yes, being in that final. Know. Yeah, thank you so much for interview and uh, very enjoying the Now we have one, here. one last question for yes. you. In the final, what we noticed from the judges' stand was that once you got introduced, once you walked onto the dance floor, the other finalists came to you and hugged you and congratulated you and welcomed you into the final. Tell us about that camaraderie. Well, it feels uh, to us that, uh, uh, anyway, we know everybody, right? So we compete in the dance floor, but out of the dance floor, we're all friends. 
so it feels of course uh, good to us of course we felt you know for max at the same time but then he left quickly so we couldn't have chance to say but to all other competitors of course on the dance floor we feel uh, competition but out of the dance floor we all have a good relationship so it feels uh, natural it feels normal so I it's all about balance then the same thing about balance out of the floor we all work together and like sometimes we see each other at same studios and in a dance floor of course you do your uh, competition part and uh, you don't have time to think about friendship you really go yeah and well congratulations to you guys that was an amazing night Vanilla. great dancing fabulous final and um, thank you so much for joining us here live at Emerald Ball thank, thank you. you thank you Keeping the competition alive, Valeria Kostianic, the uh, magnificent performance in the final round they of the American great. Smooth. Yes, I agree. Um, and we have another couple coming in live right here, and they are about to dance um, the open professional American rhythm. And it's a tight competition, Hello, a very Bart tight competition. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Excellent, excellent. The competition is all full. The floor is going to be jam-packed. Tell us your strategy for carving out your space. Just share the floor with everybody and just be nice to each other and find a place to dance and be as a friend as we are outside. Now, I have to ask a different question. I see Inga's hairstyles changing and changing and changing. So we just went from short. Now we have a beautiful, long ponytail. Is, um, how are you developing your style right now? What are your thoughts? Well, right now I decided to be more elegant for today and because it's emerald ball, so I decided to have some emerald color, which I think nice. Okay, also we, I saw a hairstyle change, change in you as well. <laughs> so um, you see couples constantly work on their appearance, constantly work on developing themselves. Um, what is the plan for tonight? Like what is your most important thought when you're going out there? The plan for tonight is our actually three years anniversary. We started three years again our partnership and we're going to celebrate on the floor and be dance together. We're going to just enjoy it. Just enjoy yeah. and concentrate with each other and share the love and spirit and the style that we're pro providing. Okay, we've been talking to each, each couple about their particular kind of training, how many hours they put in. Can you give us like one little insight? What is one secret thing you do or one special thing you do that makes your training unique to you? So especially now, uh, than, uh, compared before, I have more time now uh, to practice. So we're spending a lot of time, basically like I would say five, six hours a day to practice. So every day is a different uh, appearance. Every day is different uh, knowledge. Uh, just wanted to make sure that every day we're uh, achieving something that what we want to work. So it could be like a, a technical part. Next day it could be like a connection. But overall, on the end, about us, about our style, about our what we want to introduce and show it to the people. Amazing. Well, we're very, very excited to see you compete tonight. Good luck in the quarterfinal round. It's going to be packed on that dance Good floor. Good luck tonight. And thank you so much for joining us live here at Emerald Ball. Thank you. So you saw it here first on Ballroom Backstage, American Rhythm competitors sharing what it's like to compete, sharing what it's like to get ready yes. five or six hours a day. Yes. And that's on their own personal dancing. The that's on their own professional commitment. partnership. I remember when we were practicing, it's like you... You know, you split it up, but that's what we did. You know, you start maybe in the morning, you do your fitness regime in the morning, uh, you maybe work on routines in the afternoon, and then for us, late night was rounds time because that resembles most what we do in real events. Most of our finals, most of our uh, rounds are actually late at night, so we already conditioned ourselves to be able to do that and function and um, actually have our stamina ready late at night, but it takes a lot. And the stamina is not just having the stamina for that one night of competition. No. This is, we're talking long term here. Teachers who are spending five or six hours a day on their own personal dancing and then maybe teaching as many as eight or nine lessons, sometimes more in a day, and are doing that over five, six days a week, plus travel, plus all of the time that it takes in the hotel, plus rehearsal time on the dance floor at the event. So ballroom dancing at that level is really not a job. It's a lifestyle. It's, it you is a lifestyle. You have to love it. If you love it, I the don't think anybody is able to do it. These, these young competitors, are com they're busy 25-8, yes. literally 25-8. It's just something where they do so much 
to add to the art and yeah. so much to teach. It's sort of like an earn while you burn type of a thing. And here we have another guest. Welcome, okay. Olga Ginsberg. Yeah, we've been talking about the young dancers coming onto the floor. Hello. From Champion Ballroom in San Diego, California, we have Olga Ginsberg with us. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So always excited to see you and the children on the dance floor and to see just the magic that you were. Tell us how that all started. You know, it started when I was when I moved to the United States of America about, I'm not going to say when, but me. Oh, yes, because you're ancient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. And this is how it started. I started creating the kids program because I did not see any kids dancing. And I started with one and two and three and four. And I'm not going to say how many I have right now. But it's, it's dozens. It's up in the dozens, isn't dozens, it? Dozens. Dozens. <laughs> okay. Now, being in your studio, one of the things that is most notable about your particular youth program is the cultural diversity. There are children from all walks of life, children from different countries, diff children from Ukraine, Russia, Mexico, El Salvador. How do you maintain all of that and keep that cultural identity strong? You know, um, we keep it all very simple, Americanized, as we say, by Olga Ginsburg. <laughs> Americanized by somebody from the Ukraine? Somebody from the Ukraine Americanized. <laughs> well, we're working on the formula, folks. <laughs> okay. You also have congratulations coming, uh, very honestly, because this is your first year on the judging panel. Tell us about that journey. You know, I enjoy every moment of it. Uh, I love it, every second of it, to, from even wearing your heels in every single panel. I love I love it, love it, love it, and you know, I thought it would be easy, and actually, it's actually very difficult when you're standing from the competitive point of view to the judging point of view, so it's a completely different picture. I remember when you had your first competition, I think I was on that same panel, oh, yeah. and I remember you wearing that cute little blouse, and uh, I was all wrapped up in a shawl. And, um, you know, I saw you shaking after two hours. It was so freezing. That's really the curse in the ballrooms when you're judging and not moving. It gets awfully cold. And if you're That's not prepared, you're freezing. People who have never been here don't realize how no. cold a ballroom can be. Oh, yes. no. And I learned my lesson. It has to be cute by Babette fashion, but it also has to be warm. So lesson learned. So then how do you divide your time between... And we've, we've talked to a lot of people. A lot of people have said it's about balance, but how do you go about dividing your time between professional practice, teaching children, working for the judge's exam, teaching adults? How do you do it? You know, um, it wasn't that um, simple as I thought it would be because I did my judging exams about four years ago and I had to just, you know, with a new NDCA rule, I had to just wrap it up to repeat. And um, it took me... I was at the studio from 6 o'clock in the morning till the midnight, uh, in between teaching, in between uh, studying, in between practicing and all of it. But uh, since I retired from the competitive, then it was a little bit uh, less stressful not to practice, but it was actually very hard. Um, well, you could spend, dedicate some time to the studying. We just learned from the other couples four to six hours a day most of the couples put in beside the work that they are doing. So. No, it's actually, you know, it's actually very, very good. And, um, you know, I'm enjoying every single moment of it. Okay, one fun question before we go. Tell us, your, your specialty is the little ones. Tell us about the teddy bear population at Champion Ballroom. Oh, my God. We have uh, the most cutest, cutest things, which is um, they started about six months ago. And they are five and six years old. And they're already competing. And uh, tomorrow they're also going to compete. And those two twin brothers are twins, twins with uh, Russian-Ukrainian girls. Actually, Ukrainian. And they are just the most adorable kids that you can actually see it on the floor. And they are the most hard workers kids. Like, I don't have to tell five-year-old to practice. Can you imagine? That's great. That's great. That's Olga amazing. Ginsberg is a name that is going to be remembered on the dance sports circuit for a long time because those competitors that she's training today are five. They're going to be here 20 years from now still going strong. Thank you guys so 
so Congratulations. much. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you for having Johnny. us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, happy birthday. It's your birthday thank you, week. Thank you. <laughs> well, it was yesterday. Today's Cinco de Mayo, but we're still celebrating anyway. So it's been an amazing day. We have so many more things to bring you, so many more things to tell you about. We have another couple have coming another to join couple us. another coming in. Come on in. Come into the middle between us. Welcome. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Good, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so you're here tonight, 2018 Emerald Ball. What expectations do you have? Well, for sure, we're waiting for a great competition. We're very excited to watch uh, today's event. So the atmosphere, obviously, is going to be amazing, like always. Yep, I'm really excited. Okay, so uh, you're going to be watching. You're going to be enjoying the, the action. What's your favorite event? Give us something that you're really looking forward to tonight. I guess, you know, we're looking forward to getting lots of great dancers on the floor and uh, getting lots of um, great, um, you know, everything. Like, because the atmosphere just brings it everything onto the floor. To the audience, to, to us, to the dancers. So okay, now, most important question I think that, that we should add, we could probably ask this question literally of anybody. Of all of the different art forms and all of the different ways to stay fit, why dancing? I guess dancing because it's self, you know, it's a sport, obviously, but it's a beautiful sport. And uh, you get, you know, you dance, you enjoy, it's beautiful. Everything, you know, the grooming, the dressing, the every little part of the details, like the, you know, getting the tan ready, getting the hair, makeup is really exciting. So it's uh, totally different than ev any other style of sport or anything you do. So uh, that's, that's what I think. It's just beautiful. And what benefits, uh, uh, what benefits are you getting out of it? How is it affecting your life? <laughs> uh, well, for sure. Health-wise, uh, everything, because, you know, you get fit, number one, because a lot of people, that's what they want, you know, to get fit, healthy. Uh, it's a great exercise. People, you know, some people, they don't want to go to the gym to get fit, so instead they want to come to dance, and I think that's one of the best reasons why they will just want to, you know, the best thing is just to dance. Well, it's going to be a great event tonight, and it's already going on, so we don't want to keep you from watching it. Thank you guys so much for joining us here live at Emerald Ball. Appreciate it so much. Enjoy the event. Can't wait to see you on and the And thanks for being here. Thank you. So it seems to be all about not just the action, but about how people have seen dancing change their lives yes. and how people have have changed themselves to be on the dance floor even. It, it's funny because people who are not involved into this dance part, they don't realize the depth of it and what there actually is. I always enjoy that to see our brand new students coming into the studio and then le step by step develop, uh, you know, developing and, and also experiencing what there is for them. And it does change people's lives. I've witnessed it so many times. Uh, Th this is actually my favorite part. <laughs> oh, are we are we at that part again? Uh, are we yeah, bringing I, I the drink we, back? I, I, I'm not sure if we're bringing the drink back for promotion or just because we've worked so hard. I know we deserve it. We really deserve yeah, it by yeah, now. We're feeling, kind yes. of a, we're feeling like it's time to kick it back a little. Maybe we should get a new one. All the ice is melted by now. A, well, here I, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to dare. I'm going to take the dare. I'm going to sample. Have it. a sip. Still good. I'll get back to you. <laughs> oh. It's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. We'll yeah. have another sip. Try okay. it again. Make sure. Sure? Really? I have to make doubly sure. <laughs> well, ladies and okay, gentlemen, so don't here forget we are the party the zone at Emerald no, Ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have another guest. Okay. Okay, come on in. We're already having fun. Come on come in. Come on in. Hello, Asta. How are you? Yes, welcome. Welcome. Asta, we've... We, we just want to know, what's your secret? How do you work so hard, stay so pretty, do so much, accomplish so much? There's, there's, there's got to be a secret. You found extra hours in the day. No, not at all. <laughs> not I'm at struggling all. with those extra hours. <laughs> no, no, I'm busy, just really busy, trying to sleep, trying to um, eat correct. And drink. You know this uh, meme about, you know, the lady that's in the car with the... Trying oh, to eat yeah, right, drink enough. Trying to do everything in the car while driving. You, you, you That's know? you? A little bit. 
So you stay Make busy. Makeup in the windshield mirror. Is that you? <laughs> A little bit. So you stay busy all the time. Um, no, we try to have our days off. Uh, occasionally, try to have like maybe once in what? Yeah. Once in a blue moon. <laughs> so, okay, so yeah. th that's something that, that hasn't been talked about. We've spent hours and hours and hours talking about the hard work that dancers put in and how many hours of your life it takes. Yeah. What do you do when it's time to kick back? How do you, how do you unwind from dancing? Sleep. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep? No. Um, you know, just relax at home. Actually, just do nothing. Just switch off. Go for a massage. Just try not to do anything now is it for you the same like wh when i was dancing was still now i often get asked oh you know you're a dancer that's fabulous let's go out and let's go dancing and my face goes like well, oh dear that, that's like kind of <laughs> that, yeah <laughs> let's let's not dance but it's just <laughs> <laughs> that one. Is, that, is that what you're talking about um actually there isn't that much time to go out like this is as much as far as we go out that's pretty much here <laughs> you know like we see our friends and then we go back to work. But um, no, sometimes it's nice to make our plans with, you know, with our friends and do something. But most of the time, it's just gonna be relaxed. How many hours a day do you guys practice on a regular basis? We try to get in like three, four, you know, five, six times a week um, with work. Um, and then we have lessons, you know, ourselves as well. So sometimes it adds to it and, you know, it's really just, it changes. Just go, 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 go. Well, you know, what can you do? You have limited time in this business. No, that's what you do, you know, it's your passion and you guys are gorgeous dancers. So it, obvi it obviously pays off. Well, hopefully you can only do your best, right? So you can only do and, and go with your, with your feel and do what you can do and that's it you know now we've heard some dancers talk about how much they work and their secrets on the dance floor do you have any off the dance floor secrets things like like uh, like massage therapy or, or or pilates things like that anything that you do off the dance floor that helps you on the dance floor i do um i like bikram yoga and i'm always looking for uh, like different people that um have i'm not so much into Western medicine, I like all this, um, well, w maybe not Western is not the right thing, but holistic things, you know, natural things, something that's, um, that's not mechanically made, you know, or like, how do you, yeah. So now, Bik yeah. Bikram Yoga is all about breathing. How does that play into your dancing? Oh, huge, huge part, huge part, yeah, stamina. <laughs> <laughs> no, also to breathe with your partner, you know, something like just when you connect, you know, just to have that feel of a, of breath. A lot of people, when they when they start dancing, they actually hold their breath. It's like a natural reaction for some reason. Um, breath, I think, is a huge, huge part of dancing. So you're saying that when you're truly, truly connected, you're actually breathing with somebody. Yes, your partner. So that uh, and that's a connection at a whole different level, isn't it? It's much more than just being two people on the dance floor. Yeah, yeah, that's what you train and practice for, you know, like it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty intense. So there you have it, a little bit of uh, yoga, Bikram yoga especially helps your breathing and that breathing and do not hold your breath you on the dance floor at a, at an even deeper Great level advice. to another partner. <laughs> Asta, thank you so much for the advice. We thank appreciate you so the much. on air thank dance you. floor advice from Asta. Well, that's something that kind of makes it a whole more, uh, a, a lot more balanced. Another a lot more thing about that most people don't work. realize that breathing is actually part of connecting and, and dancing. And uh, I think there's a lot of wisdom to take out of what Asta just said on every level of dancing, actually. And it brings in something that is worth talking about, in fact, because we're dealing right now with an injury, Maxinitsa, mm -hmm. a pulled muscle. He's going to be needing a little bit of work to work on that pulled muscle. That's obviously going to be Western medicine, mm -hmm. but Asta telling us how she utilizes principles of Eastern medicine to keep herself healthy throughout the dance regimen. You know, for everybody, I think it's personal. For everybody, it's something different. And welcome, Dimitri, back if, if to us. If you finished my drink, I am going to be very upset. Uh, no, I didn't finish your drink, guys. I just wanted to join and to say 
like to wrap it up the show a little bit because the evening part is almost there. The professionals are starting in about five minutes. Uh, we're right on time. So what's happening here in the ballroom right now, uh, it's a big it's a big action happening. All the couples in the back room at the foyer, they warming up right now. Ballroom is pumping. We have those two doors are closed, so you have actually quietness, so you can actually hear a little bit of our of our voices. Otherwise, it's really loud. Uh, a lot of people are still coming down and coming into the evening part. Tonight is going to be very late, about until 12:30, something like this. Easily 12:30. And yeah. then there's the after party. Yes, after party in a party zone with this, what is this green, green drink. Yep. One, one, one magic it. word. I think he had it. <laughs> one, one I stole it back. I stole it back. One magic word, pizza. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was an evening to a Saturday night. We had many guests, uh, just people who just joined us. We had many guests. You can rewind a little bit, watch it through again. We try to bring you the atmosphere of the Emerald Bowl 2018. It's almost impossible to do this through the cameras, through the live broadcast. But we're really trying. It's our official second live broadcast, guys. Yay! Thank you for being here. Thank you for doing it. Uh, I'm sorry I was bossing everybody around. I'm really sorry. Uh, we have to do it to, to bring Put you... the microphone closer to your mouth. I do it. I do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't hurt. Okay, yes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I still, I still want to know that. How is it? How is it that people who have made a lifetime, who have made a whole career out of turning, are told to stand in one place? And don't turn. Because people who are watching you from the side of the screen, they, they, you know. He's bossy. I'm not. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to do a good job. Wait, for wait. You, so nobody's watching me from over there. <laughs> I, I turn. Oh my God! I turn. Okay, so it was a little bit of fun on Facebook, a little bit for you, a little bit of a glimpse. So obviously, on a scroll down ballroom backstage, see what was happening, see some interviews, was some great insight. Still a little bit more coming up. Tonight we're going to post some dancing of, uh, of standard. We're going to post some uh, dancing of rhythm, obviously, some highlights. And we're going to do the daily recap. Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. The guest star, guys, Babette Brown. I know Babette you're Brown. With I know you're busy with judging, and it's, uh, I think it's one of not many times when we are together at the same time and you're not judging, so we can have you here. Thank you so much, Dmitry Nikolaev, Babette Brown. Tony Prado, ladies, your and, man gen on the microphone. ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Emerald Bowl 2018. The action never stops. Everything.